Hello everybody, I recorded this video for all the residents just starting their anesthesia rotation, which can be overwhelming, especially for oral surgery residents. I go through the basic OR setup that you need to know for a general anesthetic case. So let's get started. So here we have a really helpful mnemonic that everyone always teaches called Miss Maid. And these are all the things that you need to have ready before bringing a patient back to the OR. And we will go through them in this order. So first we have M standing for machine, which essentially means turning on the ventilator and running all of the checks. It also means checking the gas supply of your oxygen tank as well as your anesthetic gases. So the first thing to do is to turn on the ventilator and assemble your circuit. Remember to remove and reattach your flow sensors prior to connecting your circuit to them. Attach your end tidal CO2 monitor to the purple port instead of the elbow connector in case the elbow connector needs to be removed. Remember to attach the other end of the monitor to the ventilator machine. Begin your day by running the full ventilator test. The ventilator will prompt you as to what you need to do. Begin by turning the ventilator to ventilating mode. Then check the ACO circle to make sure it is pointing upwards. Hit start. Next, you will occlude the patient Y and select continue. The rubber stopper can be found in the first drawer of the ventilator machine. For the last step, set the ventilator to bag mode. Set the APL switch halfway between 30 and 70. Hit start. The next step in setup is S, which stands for suction. Turn on the machine and attach the Yankauer tip. Have the soft tip suction readily available. Here I have my soft tip suction taped to the machine and the suction line connected to a Yankauer tip. I have the suction line kinked off so we don't have to hear the annoying sound. The next step in setup is M, which stands for monitors. This includes your ECG leads, blood pressure cuff, pulse oximeter, temperature probe, nerve monitor, plus or minus arterial line, and other monitors. Here I have the ECG leads conveniently placed underneath the mattress and in prime position to attach to the patient. I have my pulse ox hanging nearby as well as my blood pressure cuff. I've chosen a nasal temperature probe for the case and I have it here as well as my nerve monitor all set up and ready to go. Other monitors to consider setting up would be those that you need to take the patient back to recovery, which include your portable pulse ox and oxygen mask as well as your AMBU bag. Airway is next, which includes your ET tube plus the securing tie or tape a stylet, a glide scope, or your macromillimeter blades, as well as the eye tapes you need for intubation. My case is going to be a glide scope case. I have prepared the glide scope here by applying a size 3 cover and lubing up the cover, making sure to avoid the camera. I will also make sure to grab a glide scope stylet. I've chosen a 70 tube, applied a tie, and checked the cuff using a 10cc syringe. Here is my stylet and I will use the Glidescope stylet to replace the stylet it came with. Here is the Glidescope stylet now in place. I also make sure to have an oral airway out as well as patient eye tapes. Next I will prepare an IV kit in order to start a second IV as well as my lactated ringers. I have assembled my IV kit as well as a 6 inch connector, a clear connector, an 18 gauge and two 20 gauge needles and a flush syringe. The clear connector will attach to the six inch connector like so with the other end attaching to my flush syringe. I will then put caps on the IV line ports to make sure they will stay clean, taking care of not touching any of the clean surfaces with my fingertips. I then attach the line to my bag of lactated ringers, making sure I burp the bag to rid of any excess air. I like to make sure that my line is off before I get the chance to pump some fluid into the chamber to minimize air bubbles. I then flush the line. The last thing to prepare are the medications. 
These include your anesthetics, analgesics, antibiotics, anticoagulants, antiemetics, and emergency medications. There are four syringes that I always pull out and label. A 20cc one for propofol, a 5cc syringe for lidocaine, and 3cc syringes for Zofran and dexamethasone. This is the tray setup I use for general anesthesia cases. I have my emergency medications in the upper left corner, including phenylephrine, ephedrine, and glycopyrrolate. I have my antiemetics in the lower left corner, uh, 4 to 10 milligrams of dexamethasone, depending on the case, a uh, 4 of Zofran, 1 of Haldol, and a flush syringe. And then on the right, I have our induction agents. I have succinylcholine and or rocaronium, lidocaine, uh, which is at 100, propofol of 200, and fentanyl at 100. It is also at this point that I hang our propofol infusion, and this concludes our setup for anesthesia.